Hello again. Today we're back on the bench with an Anavia and IV2, and a commonly used device in the world of hobbyist SATCOM reception. This is the new LX Sawbird Plus NOAA, a 137 MHz Sawbird bandpass filter amplifier combo sold by New Alec. This device converts RF to acoustic waves inside of a crystal, does the filtering there, and then converts it back to RF and amplifies it for your use. So, this device is an active device, which means that there's a couple more considerations that we have to make when making measurements safely and accurately. So we're going to talk about those considerations specific to an active device first. The first thing to remember with an active device is that the output can have more power than the input. So this nano VNA puts out some amount of input power, it goes into the input port, and comes out the output port, and we can have enough RF power coming out of here that it might be too much for the nano VNA to handle. That could result in fire, snap, crackle, pop, or a bad truncated measurement when it goes out of the ADC. So we need to make sure that it's not too much power, such that it doesn't kill the nano VNA, and that it's not too much power, such that it makes a bad measurement because it overflows the ADC on the nano VNA. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to either adjust the stimulus power, or we're going to have to use attenuators. Since the nano VNA V2 output power settings are rather limited in terms of how low can you go, we're going to be using attenuators to accomplish this purpose. I've got these 2 watt 15 dB attenuators here, and I've got three of them, so this makes a 45 dB attenuator setup right here that we'll be using to make those measurements. Now another consideration when using attenuators is that you don't want to just do a calibration here at the ends of the cable and then attach attenuators and try to make your measurement, because these attenuators, they aren't going to be perfectly linear. And also, you probably want to see your measurements as if Unity uh, were actually Unity, as opposed to Unity being, you know, 45 dB down on your measurement display. That's no fun. So we want to move our measurement plane up to the top of these attenuators, calibrating out any non-linearities in them, and also making the measurements appear as if there's actually gain on our display when we take our measurements of the S parameters of the device. Now, another concern about the calibration here, and this is just a general note, is that, again, the Nanovina V2 and the Nanovina V1 both come with a male cow kit and this female-to-female -female SMA adapter. So we're going to break one rule today, and that's going to be that we're going to use this adapter, and then the male cow kit and calibrate there, use the adapter as the through standard, and then we're going to take the adapter off, and we're going to measure directly at the Sawbird Plus NOAA. And that's going to allow me to connect, measure, flip, connect, measure, and create a full S2P file of this device for use in later simulations. Now, when we're normally using the device, of course, we'll be using a male-to-male -male SMA adapter, kind of like is on this Sawbird, and that would be the use case, but for the actual device itself, I'd rather just measure at the input ports. So let's get into how I came to the numbers that I need to use the 45 dB attenuator setup and how I'm sure that that's safe. Now, the first things first, I tried to look for the Nano V2 maximum input power allowed at this port. I couldn't find anything conclusive. I found ranges that it lets me drag the slider to a Nano V QT. I found recommended power levels, but I didn't find a maximum or a maximum accurate measurement at this terminal kind of deal. So the assumption I'm going to make is that the default stimulus from this port is minus 15 dBm. So we've already made through measurements uh, directly, which means about minus 15 dBm gets to here. So let's make the input power at this terminal approximately minus 15 dBm, and we'll call it a day. And actually, let's shoot to be just a little bit lower than that to be on the safe side. Now, the Sawbird Plus NOAA, uh, from what I've heard on the internet, some people have said this gets somewhere between 30 to 40 dB of gain. So we're going to use 40 dB as our figure and play it safe based on that figure. So, if the Nano VNA V2 outputs minus 15 dBm, and then there's a gain of 40 dBm, we get 25 dBm of RF power, which is equivalent to 0.316 watts. That's a lot, and we're probably going to want to attenuate that. Now, if we attenuate that by 45 dB, it's just addition of subtraction. It is the hardest math, but uh, not, a, not, not so bad right here. Minus 20 dBm of RF power. That's slightly below our stimulus. All good. Smiley face. But there's one more consideration. What power rating do we think these attenuators are? The first attenuator in this stack 
has to dissipate the most power because 20 dB of signal power is, or 15 dB of signal power is gone after this attenuator, then 15 more dB, then 15 more dB. So this attenuator has to be able to handle the immediate input power right to it, and that's 25 dBm or 0 0.316 watt. Now these attenuators are rated at 2 watts, but you could have much smaller attenuators. So 2 watts is greater than 0 0.316 watts, so this guy's not going to blow up when it has to dissipate that RF power as heat. So this is no problem, and we can go ahead and use this. Now, if you needed a higher power rating attenuator, you don't have to get a whole stack of high power attenuators. It just has to be the first one, because remember, and I think this one is actually a 10 watt, 20 dB attenuator. This takes 20 dB off the signal. And then the thing that's 20 dB down from the original signal, that that's the power that this guy would have to handle, not the brunt of the RF power that's being dissipated by this guy. So. We could take these guys and we will connect them and we're going to do our calibration at the output of this attenuator setup and we know that we're safe in terms of the RF power we're going to be dealing with. Alright, so I've teleported inside my magic confuser now and we'll get the sweep parameters set up. For this sweep we're going to be doing 301 points from 120 megahertz to 150 megahertz with the step size that'll be 0.1 megahertz. We're going to use the default stimulus power minus 15 dBm as previously discussed and without further ado we'll begin our calibration for a TRVNA so we set this to salt with T slash R for just getting two S parameters at a time, and we will begin our calibration. So first we connect our short circuit, but we're going to need our female to female SMA adapter. Now careful when you're putting this in, you don't want to screw the actual adapter. You want to hold the cable and the adapter in place and screw the connector on the cable. This prevents the adapter from grabbing hold of the center pin and causing damage. Next we'll actually connect that short circuit. Uh, then we'll press the short button to run that part of the calibration. Next we disconnect the short circuit and connect the open circuit. This is followed by our 50 ohm load to normalize our Smith chart impedance. And now finally we are going to take our through measurement, disconnect the 50 ohm load, connect the end of the attenuators, connect it to the other cable and the other port. Now finally we hit apply, and we've applied our new calibration. Now we begin the process of checking our calibration. Uh, right now we're looking through those attenuators, but we should see that as 0 dB of attenuation, because that's what we calibrate as perfect through measurement, and a good matching. We see minus 40 dB return loss, so that's good. Next we'll disconnect that, and this will be our test for an open circuit. Now we're going to be removing the SMA connector adapter in here. Remember, try and hold the SMA adapter in place. Take that off. And now this is our simulated open circuit here. We should be towards the far right of the Smith chart. I took the SMA adapter off, so it's off by a little bit, but we're going to have to accept that due to the cal kit they provide us. Next, let's put that back on and check the short circuit and the 50 ohm load. Short circuit should be on the far left and we're seeing all the measurements move over there. So that's all good. We'll disconnect the short circuit and check our 50 ohm normalized impedance which should be at the center of the Smith chart. And we're seeing a dot in the center of the Smith chart. So our calibration appears to be valid. So now we can disconnect all of that. We can connect our device under test. Now when connecting our device under test, which is an amplifier, we have a very specific procedure we have to follow. This, being an amplifier, outputs RF from its output port with the, the lighty LED thingy, and if we were to just power this right here, the termination of this port is an open circuit, which as you know is definitely not 50 ohms, and represents an extreme mismatch condition that will cause power reflections, which could damage this. This is very much the same thing as forgetting to connect your antenna to your FPV transmitter, and having your FPV transmitter die. You don't want to power this without the proper termination here. So the first thing we do for an amplifier is we connect the output to a 50 ohm termination, in this case the input to one of our VNA ports. Then you can either connect the input and then the power, or the power and then the input. Now I have been taught that I should connect the power first, and I've asked the TAs and the professors if they have a reason for that, but I they haven't had something super concrete. The best thing I can think of is that when you plug this in, 
if there's a problem with this amplifier and that DC is way too much and ends up on that port right there and blows up the VNA, you only have one blown port on, well, if it's lab equipment, your VNA that you can send out to the manufacturer to get repaired. Uh, in the case here where our VNA is $50 and is more in time cost than in monetary cost, uh, I don't know that that's such an issue. But I'm gonna do what I was taught and power first and then input. Now once we have this connected, we can go ahead and make our measurements. Okay, so we're inside the confuser again, and we're going to be converting this to an STP file, and I've made a bunch of markers here, and I'll also give you some of the highlights of these measurements. There's this weird peak with like 10 dB of amplification occurring below the actual pass band, and that's at 134.20 MHz. That's somewhere in air band, and that might actually cause some significant problems. I don't know if that's unique to this specific sawbird filter, or if that's a more common phenomenon. Then I put a bunch of markers across the 137 megahertz satellite band at the start, at popular uh, NOAA and meteor frequencies, and at the end. And then I put two markers at the edges of the pass band where it's getting the most amplification. The whole thing is pretty consistent. We're seeing like eh, 28, 27, 28 dB of amplification through that band. And then I put one at the end of that amplification band right there. And one final marker is placed at the point where it starts to average around uh, 20 dB down again, although this does appear a little bit all over the place. That's about everything there is to say about the actual S21 measurement for the gain, but we also have to look at our S11 measurement for the return loss on the input port here. And what we're seeing is that this is not well matched at all. We never get below minus 10 dB return loss here, so we'd never have a VSWR better than 2 to 1, and this is like nowhere close to the center of the Smith chart. So while the device does work as a filter and an amplifier, it's not well matched to 50 ohms. That would be a problem if we were going to stack devices. Uh, and that, that might also be a bigger problem if the other port doesn't look similar or behave similar if we were to actually try and match to this impedance here. Because that's what we'll talk about with a simultaneous matching problem where if you have a two-port device and you match to one port of the two-port device, that will affect the impedance on the other port. So you have to solve the equation simultaneously, and that's a bit more involved than you might think. We'll go into that in a later video where I talk about how to design a uh, L-band LNA on a microstrip tape board, but that's for another time. For right now, just know this isn't well matched. And with that, we can uh, move to exporting the S11 and S21 parameters. So let's convert this to an S2P file, and and go ahead and save it. So we hit capture S1, which captures S11 and S21. And after it's done capturing, we'll go ahead and reverse the connectors and then repeat the process for that S star 2 option, which will take parameters S12 and S22 for us. For disconnecting and reconnecting the amplifier, the first thing I usually do is take the power off of the device. This uh, prevents it from, you know, putting out RF and then maybe damaging itself, and then I disconnect the input, and then finally you disconnect that output termination. Now we're going to flip the device and put it on the other way, and we'll connect the 50 ohm termination to the output, which can generate significant RF power first, so even if this were powered right from here, we wouldn't have an issue. And in this case, I will also just power this with nothing connected. Now we are taking a risk now, depending upon how much power this could actually output uh, just from the noise floor not attenuated into our VNA, but it's most likely, and it is in this case because I haven't detected damage after the fact, that no problems here. And then we connect our input with all those attenuators, and if this were sending RF in, it would send a small amount of RF in, which would hopefully produce a small amount of RF out and be handleable by our VNA. In this case, this port produces nothing, and this port produces something, and we're trying to measure a through measurement from this port to this port, and the reflection at this port. So we have basically nothing to worry about, especially because it's a half VNA, not a full VNA. So now here we are with the measurement of S22 and S12, and here we can see we have the same problem with uh, mismatch, where we, at none of our markers, get below minus 10 dB return loss at port 2, and uh, yeah, that doesn't look so great there. But the uh, device is acting one way, not amplifying at all, so we're seeing minus 30 dB down, so basically nothing's getting through uh, in the direction S12, and that's to be expected, but again, I, I wish this would have been a better matched impedance, and that might present the problems that I discussed earlier.
So let's go ahead and we'll export this. We got to capture S2, which captures S22 and S12. That'll have to do the whole sweep, but then it will export. So now that we've exported that, we just export the final S2P file, and we'll name this something intelligent. So I'll put this in my amateur radio folder. We'll name this something intelligent. This is, and there we have it. That file will be available for viewing uh, as a link in the video description. That's about all I have for this video today. So if you enjoyed this content, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing for more.